Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kudash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, I was watching this video here. All right, done by the uh, these elders and uh, elder brothers here, and um, you know, as you can see, you know, I'm 22 minutes in. I didn't really <laughs> get all the way through. All right, but as I was listening, okay, the spirit just got so heavy that I had to do a video. All right, which is why I'm here. Now, you know, as you listen to the words, you know, and the precepts that are being brought out, okay, it's very, very important, okay, as as they mentioned, to uh, to speak life, okay, in these in these videos, and you know, always balancing balancing out your speech. You know, you wanna you wanna speak life more than you speak death, okay. You wanna speak victory more than you speak defeat, okay. You shouldn't even speak defeat for us at all. Okay, and um, <clears throat> as this elder brother, I believe his name is like Tazwan, mentioned in the video, he said, hey, Yahawashai's name, all right, we, we our power, okay, uh, uh, Yahawashai's name is what? He deliverer, and no other nation, or no, or no other nation's God has that name, you know, so why are we looking, okay, towards Yahawashai's coming as, you know, the opposite of his name? Why, why would his name be deliverer? If he's not coming to deliver anybody, you know, what would be the point of him going on the cross and dying if none of us are going to get saved? You know, he might as well just have left us in our sins, right? Now, this is John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Quickeneth meaning it makes alive. Okay, and as you listen, all right, you, you get that, that feel, okay? You get that feel and you get that... that that spiritual rejuvenation, okay, it's always good to stay in a, in a positive mindset, man. Okay, and like they mentioned, what ifs, you know, what ifs are, are just demons, okay? What ifs do not exist. What ifs only exist in your mind. And if you are not careful, they're gonna, you know, they can feel so real, then you start to act and your vibration starts to change based on these negative what if thoughts that you have in your mind. You're, you're living your life based on a what if that hasn't even happened and won't ever happen because it's just that a what if thought you have to focus on what is okay what is written and what's written is our salvation what's written is our deliverance okay Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai are not going to be with us this whole time protect us every time we go to camp give us the spirit to speak their words all right in holiness and spirit and truth Okay, change our lives, protect us and provide for us constantly and just leave us to fend for ourselves when we need the most in the time of Jacob's trouble. So as, as we're going into this time, don't go in there with the mindset of death and, you know, oh my gosh, and oh my, what if I have to, you know, go five days without eating? The Lord might, might feed you off the jump. You might not have to go any days without eating. You, you just have to expect the best from the Lord and be prepared to deal with whatever comes your way. Okay, but we're dealing with faith. We're dealing with belief. Okay, so you have to you have to speak righteousness and life into existence. Because remember, our words carry a vibration behind it. And if your vibration is going out and calling demons towards you, you're going to end up in that position. All right. So this is uh, John 6 and 66. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay, so just as Yahweh Shai said, his words are spirit and life. Okay, so what are we supposed to teach, being that we are the disciples and the servants of Yahweh Shai? We are supposed to also follow in those footsteps and speak spirit and life into existence, speak deliverance, speak salvation, speak spiritual power, speak winning and victory. Because for the longest, all right, we've all been on the bottom, but this this time that we're in. It's only going to happen once, okay? Jacob's trouble is only going to happen once, and that's it. And you mean to tell me that the Lord is just going to have us take another L? We took an L in 70 AD. We took an L in 586 when, when uh, uh, the Babylonians destroyed our temple. We took an L when, when uh, 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 Antiochus Epiphanes came in there and violated our, our, our temple again, okay? We took an L throughout the rulership of all these different captivities. But this time, we're going to take that W. 
this this time the Lord is going to show out big time for us. You know? This time, spiritual power is going to be put on the earth like never before. Okay? Deliverance, salvation. The Lord said what? He was going to give us fame in the land where we've been put to shame. Now, of course, in the kingdom, ultimately, we're going to have fame. But hold on. The land where we were put to shame, majority is here. So we're going to have fame before this land gets destroyed. Okay? Because this is also one of the lands that we were put to shame in. We were called niggers and spicks and a bunch of crazy people but these bunch of crazy people the lord is about to turn the tables and show you that we are a hey, like apostle gabar always says the highest value males okay so now let's go from here to second Ezra chapter 16 verse 70 because these verses and these scriptures are not written in here for no reason okay yes we, we speak about the judgments but why are you worried about a judgment that's set for the wicked Unto the righteous, all things are pure. And unto the wicked, therefore your destruction. So if you're not wicked, stop worrying about the wicked's destruction. You know? Worry about the righteous's reward. All right, now, matter of fact, before I get this, since I just mentioned that, let's go here. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 13. This is what the Lord told Ezra. And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when. Okay? So Esau is going to come in. We know he's going to come with great wrath. He has technology we've never seen before, but that should be motivating to you because with how, with how great the opposition is going to be, we, the Lord, is going to balance it out by giving us even greater because the right hand always and ultimately triumphs the left hand. Okay? So the power the Lord is going to give us on the right hand and the deliverance and the protection is going to balance out and far supersede the left hand yes david looked shorter in comparison he looked smaller in comparison to goliath but his power his spiritual power was much much more immense to see if if people could see into the spirit when they saw that battle of david and goliath they would have they would have they would have seen it as an unfair match against goliath okay because if you were to see david in the spirit he would have he, he, he would look 10,000 times the size of Goliath okay but on out on the outward appearance he looked you know small so it looked as though the odds were against him but that's how the Lord set it up okay and without tiresome labor he was able to defeat Goliath with a sling all right and stones that is the spirit of the Lord man this this dude had battle weapons he had experience he had armories he, he was feared and just like that, he was taken out. Okay? So, like it says here, be, then there, and that's how Esau is going to come in. Alright? But really, we, we have nothing to fear, man. The Lord is in control of it all. Our power is in control of our enemy. Okay? Our power is in control of our fate, man. And if we trust in our power to deliver us, as he already said he would, what's there to fear? Okay? What glory would the Lord gain if there's nobody to rejoice and to praise his name? Okay, when you read in the book of Esther, it tells you she, in the prayers, all right, when we pray to the Most High, we always included the fact that if the Lord was to allow our enemies to destroy us, who would be left on the earth to praise Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai as we praise him? Who would be left on the earth to glorify Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai as we do? Who would sing psalms about the deliverance that the Lord uh, gave to us, you know? Who would praise his holy name? How do you think we ended up doing that? By the way of our deliverance. They sung the song of Moses because they got delivered by the Lord, okay? The Lord loves the praise, okay? So he is going to do things that is going to cause us to praise and rejoice and be glad in his name, all right? That is the spirit to be in. So like the angel told Ezra, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Whose, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. So if the world was created for us and the world belongs to us, why would the Lord just have us all get massacred by the devil? He hates the devil and he loves us. And we are the only ones who are doing something that is pleasing to the Lord. So stop always thinking the negatives, man. All right, the negatives are for the negative people. 
all right we are positive and we have the spirit of the most high all right by Hashem Yahweh Shai and and the, the Lord is not a power of the dead he is the power of the living so if we carry the spirit of the power of the living should we not speak life should we not meditate on things that that bring life okay should we not rejoice okay all this fear talk is gonna kill your faith all it's gonna do is weaken your vibration okay second Ezra chapter 16 verse 70 it says for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord all right and so what verse 71 they shall be like madmen sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord all right now that doesn't mean the elect okay those that fear the Lord is talking about Israelites and th those that they're gonna be destroying and spoiling are the the, uh, the wicked all right verse 72 for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses then shall they be known who are my chosen see the Lord like the Lord said you're not gonna back the prophets into a corner anymore okay touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm not a little bit of harm no but no harm do you know how special we are to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and not speaking in pride but speaking be speaking humbly all right we are very special to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai okay because we uh, have the spirit okay of meekness Lord willing we are of the elect we have the spirit that the Lord is looking for a spirit that was qualified tried in the fire all right and the Lord sought worthy to present this this holy truth too all right because if you weren't special to the Lord think about the things you were doing in the world if you weren't special to the Lord what would cause the Lord to have you get taken out of that that you know messed up state and cleaned up and given this truth the Lord had to have seen something in you all right in order to give you this knowledge to give you a chance to even call you to his work because there's people out there that hear this word but the Lord didn't call them because he didn't see them fit you know so it's not it's not a good thing to be in that damn I know I'm gonna get the guillotine you know damn I know I'm 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 just gonna be a martyr you know damn the way the Lord said you don't know that <laughs> we know there will be martyrs but you don't know specifically if that's you you don't know how the Lord has planned out your journey in the time of Jacob's trouble. You don't know how the Lord has planned out your end. Okay? But what you do know is that the Lord said he will deliver us. So you should hope and have that spirit of life. You should expect deliverance. You should expect salvation. Okay? You should expect the Lord to protect us as he said. He will send his angels. All right? To keep us. Lest at any point we dash our foot against a stone. Why do we have guardian angels if the Lord just, just wants us to be destroyed? <laughs> what are the angels there for? All the times the Lord has delivered you in your in your day in your day-to-day -day life. The Lord, hey, hey man, and I, I can attest to that. There's hey, certain prayers, all right, might seem trivial, but the Lord still answers them. So you sit back and you ask yourself, okay, the most high, the power of all powers, and Yahweh Shai, the two most powerful beings in all existence. All right. No matter how minute this request was, they answered it. They answered it. So if they were able to answer that prayer, why wouldn't they be able to answer your prayers of deliverance? Why wouldn't they set you up for salvation? Why wouldn't they set you up for for success when you need it most? See, they'll answer. They can answer something that you know it might be a simple thing, you know, but they'll still answer that prayer for you. But then when all hell breaks loose, they're just going to leave you out there? If they care enough to answer that prayer that you pray now, how much more for when you need it most? Anyway, it says, um, verse 73, Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Hear, O, my, o ye my beloved. You see, when we read these scriptures, it's important that we don't just read over these words man the lord is speaking to us as what his beloved let's look up the word beloved all right let's go to google real quick and let's type in beloved 
definition. Listen to this. Dearly loved. Okay, a much loved person. And this is why it's good to look up words. Let's look up a few of uh, the syn uh, synonyms. Darling, dear, dearest, precious, loved, esteemed, cherished, favorite, admired, valued. Okay? So now, when we go back to the scripture, the Lord says what? Hear, O ye my beloved, my favorite, okay? My, my cherished, my valued. This is, say if the Lord, this is what the Lord said. Okay? And he's speaking to his elect. So, for somebody you love, and you have the power to deliver them, would you even want any harm to even come close to them? What, what, did you think the Lord was lying when he said in the book of Job, all right, that there shall none evil come nigh thy habitation? It won't even come near us. Wild animals, guns, bullets, famine. The Lord said he's going to deliver us from all of that. Okay? Oh, it says, hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Why? Because the Lord loves us. Okay? Don't underestimate the power of the love of our father and our big brother. Do you understand the pain of what Yahweh Shai had to go through? But because he had to go through it and through the love that he had for us, he went through it. So if he had that strong love for us then, how much more for now? Okay? Hey, and like the brothers mentioned in the video, why would the Lord die so all of us could perish? Wouldn't he, didn't he die that we might have life and have it more abundantly? So the Lord says the days of trouble are at hand, but I would deliver you from the same. Why? Because I loved you. You, I love you. You are my beloved. Okay? No father wants to see their, 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 their child or their son, and no brother wants to see their sibling, all right, in trouble, and they can help them, but no. And they're just going to leave them out there? No. <laughs> it says, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide. Like, I, I, like does that resonate? All right. The Most High is your guide. Not the Incredible Hulk. Not Superman, keyword man, okay? Not not a genie, not a fairy. The Most High is our God, the Creator of all us and our adversaries and everything in existence is our God. They're telling us not to be afraid, not to doubt. Like as in, we're so good, we don't even have to doubt, okay? We don't even have to doubt, man. Look. Think about the concept of a chariot, a so-called UFO. You see how 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 technologically advanced that is that we can't even fully comprehend it? The most high created that. Light work. Okay? Think about everything in existence. Think about Leviathan. Think about animals. Think about the ecosystem. Think about air. How do you even make air? You see how complicated that is? The most high made that light work. The brain, the eyes, okay, the human body. Thought. How does thought work? You ever sat down and think about that? How do you think? How does thought work? How do you have a voice inside your head that you hear but you don't hear at the same time? The Most High set that up. You see how complex it is? And the Most High did that easily. But here it is, all hell is going to break loose and he can't deliver you? You see how stupid that sounds? Because the Most High is not, it, it's going to be one of two things. Either he can't deliver you or he won't deliver you. Now we can cross out, he won't deliver you because he just said here, <laughs> I will deliver you from the same. And all that's left is he can't deliver you, but that's a lie. So we can cross that off the list too. So now what's holding you back from deliverance? What's holding you back from salvation? You see, you gotta really think about it, man. Sometimes the things we fear are really in our head. What are you fearing? Are you fearing dying in Jacob's trouble? We haven't even entered it yet. Okay, what, what, when the Lord said in Isaiah 65 that we're going to eat and rejoice and laugh and well, what about that? Who's going to fulfill that scripture if we're all dead, if we're all suffering, if we're all in pain, if we're all crying? You see, when you really sit down and read these scriptures, all right, 
you start to see how stupid the fears that you have are. Hey, sometimes you have fear that's so big, but when you get to root, the root of that is nothing. It's a, it's a ball of nothing that's just been covered and hardened by just layers of fear. Okay? And you have you have to break that spell of that, all right? And get into the mindset of righteousness. Get excited, man. Okay? So it says, verse 76, And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, save the Lord power, are, are not, do not we keep the commandments of the Lord to the best of our ability? Who else goes out there on the highways and byways, sacrifices their, their life in this world to go out there and do what the Lord commanded them to do? Out of the whole world, all these billions of people on the planet Earth, who else is doing what the Lord commanded them to do? Okay, who else is believing in these precepts? Okay, if not us, who else? It says, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift themselves up. The moment you start to let your sins weigh you down, you start to underestimate the love and the mercy of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. The Lord's mercies far triumph your sins. Your sins are not heavier or greater than the Lord's mercies. Your sins don't determine whether the Lord is going to forgive you or not. He said in the book of Romans, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. Okay? The Lord had mercy on that harlot when the elders and the people of the city wanted to stone her to death. Okay? The things we've done in the world, the Lord has had mercy on us. It wasn't by the level of our sins. It was by the level of the Lord's mercy and compassion. So don't underestimate the power of of the Lord's mercy and love for us by your sins, by your fleshly thoughts. Okay? It's it's like a, a insecure woman, you know, who who you know she 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 feels as though she's not good enough for you. But she doesn't understand that you're not you're not you don't like her because of what you know I mean what this that and the third. You just like her because you like her. You know? She's thinking, damn, but I did this and I did that, but it's not about that. All right. I'm not liking you based on what you've done and what I'm liking you because of my love for you. All right. It says verse 77, woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. You see, when you're trapped and you're and you're locked and you're always thinking about, you know, the, the negatives and what you've done and all that, you can't break out of that shell. You're bound with your sins. It says and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes. You're trapped under that. Instead of breaking out of that and being that new man renewed by the spirit of the Lord and instead surrounding yourself with life, all right, with salvation, with thoughts of deliverance, if you bound yourself with thoughts of the sins and how, damn, the Lord's going, damn, what if the Lord and Put that away, man. Put that away. It's not going to do you any good. It says, and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. Okay? Because over time, it's going to get so much that you're just going to end up fine. You're going to you're going to feel like there's no use in doing what you're doing now because you've done you've done way too much negative that the Lord won't even want to deliver you. Well, are you the Lord? Are you in his mind? OK. Uh, verse 78 says it is left undressed and it is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. All right. Now from here, let's go to Joshua chapter one, verse nine. All right. Key precept right here, man. This is what the Lord said. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, thy power is with thee whithersoever thou goest. This is a commandment. The Lord commanded us. We don't have a choice but to, <laughs> but to be strong and have a good courage. We don't have a choice but to think of deliverance. We don't have a choice. We have been commanded to believe in salvation. We have been commanded to not be afraid, to not be dismayed. Okay? To be afraid is a disrespect to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? To be afraid is, is, is saying that the Lord is not strong enough to, del to deliver you. If you believe that you are covered by the hedge and the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, what are you afraid of? And if you are afraid, you should be afraid of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's the fear of the Lord. But that's a different kind of fear. 
Okay? But if you're out here timid and scared of every little thing, that's a disrespect to the Lord. He commanded us to be strong and of a good courage. We don't have a choice. Okay? Now, I just remember the precept. Uh, let's see. Afraid. There it is. Proverbs 3 and 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Now, it tells you in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3 that the destruction is going to come suddenly. But the Lord said, be not afraid of it. Okay? That is a commandment pursuant to Joshua 1 and 9. You, you got to go into Jacob's trouble. Of course, in your flesh, you know, initially... But that's when you got to snap out of it, man. And that is why we gain comfort and, and understanding through these precepts. That's why we, we need to remember and have these precepts embedded in our spirit. Okay, they're going to be our, our, our rejuvenation. Okay. So as the Lord said, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, thy power is with thee whithersoever thou goest. I mean, the Lord gave us his name and his son's name. You, The Lord did all that just to cast us away? Nah, man. All right, now this is 2 Maccabees chapter 15, verse 7. But Maccabeus had ever sure, ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. And that is the kind of spirit we have to be in. Okay? Verse 8. Wherefore he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven, and now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from the Almighty. You hear that? We have to expect the victory and the aid. All right? We are, it, it's, it's been written that we're going to be aided. The way we're going to win this, this battle is through the help, the divine intervention, and the aid that cometh from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? So we have to expect the victory and the aid which should come from the Almighty. Not from your guns, not from a group, but from the Heavenly Father, from heaven. You are to remember the help, alright, that the Lord gave us at former time. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel. Okay? There's a whole lot. Uh, Samson. Okay, King David. All right, Jeremiah. You know, all these, oh, hey, Peter, Paul, even Yahushai. Okay, Yahushai received help. See, when he when he felt weak in the spirit and he prayed to the Father, yeah, the Father didn't answer, but the Father gave him the spirit to be able to say, you know what? Nonetheless, let thy will be done. And the Lord gave Yahushai the spirit to be able to go through the full crucifixion. That was aid that came from the Almighty. And it allowed Yahushai to be able to do what he did, man. And we have to expect the same aid, man, that even in our darkest hour, we are gonna receive aid. They have no temptation uh, uh, taking you, all right, such as is, is, is not common to man, roughly paraphrasing, all right, but with every temptation, the Lord will make a way for us to escape. All right? So in closing, I want to get this, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 20. It says, And I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. I'm going to read that again. Let's look up the word brazen. All right. Uh, let's see. Copper, bronze, uh, fetters, copper. Okay. So the Lord is going to make us a bronze, all right, a copper, a, a wall. All right, let's look up how strong is bronze. I said bronze. <laughs> Woo! Though bronze is generally harder than wrought iron with Viker's hardness of 60 to 250 versus 30 to 80, all right, yeah, I don't need all that. I just need to know this. Bronze is, is generally stronger than wrought iron. And the Lord said, what? I will make thee unto these people a fenced, brazen wall. Okay? Who the hell is going to be able to break through that wall, man? 
and they shall they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Okay? It says, For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. The Lord is with us, not just to, to not to see our destruction, but to save us and to deliver us. He's gonna save us from the coming destruction, all right, from the times of Jacob's trouble, and he's gonna deliver us from this land, all right, and deliver us ultimately from death forever. Verse 21, and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. See, we're in the land, all right, that Esau controls, we're under his surveillance, all right? It seems as though we're in his hand. But the Lord said he's gonna deliver us, he's gonna break Esau's hand apart, and he's gonna deliver us, man. It says, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. So you may be surrounded. You may, they may be at your doorstep. You may look like you're at, you're literally, they got their hands on you. But what did the Lord say? He's going to deliver us out of their hand and redeem us out of the hand of the terrible, man. These are the words of our power. All right. And if you know the history of our power, there's, there's no word that he sent out that came back void. Everything has either come to pass, is coming to pass now, or will come to pass. All right? And these are the things the Lord has spoken, man. So these are the things we ought to speak. All right? We have to speak life, man. We have to speak deliverance. We have to exhort each other, all right, to expect deliverance, to expect aid. All right? So when that time comes, where all of us are looking, we're, we're literally looking for the Lord to step in, man. All right? It's not a matter of what if, but a matter of when. Okay? Because the Lord will step in. Yes, he will. Okay, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai will div uh, divinely intervene on our behalf, man. And we have to believe that and push that. So with that, I hope you were edified. All right, in closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai Ba'ashim Rakha Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.